Welcome to German history with a German accent. My name is Wolf, W-O-L-F, just like the animal. And in today's video, I'm speaking about Oskar Schindler. As always, if you enjoy these videos, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and don't forget to drop me a comment below. Oskar Schindler was born on April 28th, the year 1908 in Zwittau, at that point located in Austria, Hungary, as son of Johann and Franziska Schindler. At the age of 16, he was kicked out of school for forging his diploma. He found work at his father's agricultural equipment factory afterwards. While growing up, he was raised with Catholic values. Oskar Schindler, at the age of 19, married Emilia Pelzel in the year 1928. After his father's company went out of business due to economic hardship during the Great Depression, Oskar Schindler worked as an agent for the Amt Ausland in the Abwehr in Czechoslovakia. The Abwehr was the military intelligence service of the Wehrmacht, with Wilhelm Canaris as his superior. Check out the video I made about Canaris by clicking the little eye on the top right of this video. His cover was blown in the year 1939 and he was found guilty of high treason after he sent secrets of the Czechoslovakian railroad to the German Reich. His death sentence was not carried out because Nazi Germany occupied the remaining parts of Czechoslovakia in March 1939. In the same year, Oskar Schindler joined the NSDAP and left the Abwehr with the hope to secure high-paying governmental contracts. To benefit from the war, he moved to occupied Poland, to Krakow precisely. There he took over a factory which he later purchased with the advisory and financial help of his Polish Jewish bookkeeper, Abraham Bankier. In his factory, he had Polish workers manufacture sheet metal kitchenware for the Wehrmacht. Since sheet metal was very scarce during the war, Schindler made a fortune off of selling it on the black market as well as with the connection established by Polish Jews. Schindler's factory, the Deutsche Emil Warenfabrik, German Animalware Factory, DEF for short, grew rapidly during the first three years of the Second World War. By the end of 1942, he employed over 800 people. 370 of them were Jewish. By this time, the main reason for employing Jewish workers was that they were cheaper and more reliable than other workers. This later changed after Oskar Schindler got more and more disgusted with the way Nazis treated the Jewish population. Since his factory also produced grenade hulls, the factory was considered more relevant. This did not only secure him a financial benefit, but it made it also possible to request more Jewish labor force controlled by the Schutzstaffel SS. To prevent deportation of his laborers, Oskar Schindler used bribes, document forgery, and drugs of all sorts. He also declared that deportation of his personnel would significantly slow down production of more important materials. After the Schutzstaffel cleared the ghetto of Krakow from Jews, they were either sent to death camps, and the ones fit for work were sent to the forced labor camp Lasso, Schindler was able to house his forced laborers in a separate camp after he befriended Amon Goethe, who was a very brutal camp commander. Even when the camp was transformed into a concentration camp, Schindler was able to protect his forced laborers from the extreme brutality in the camp. For example, he was able to negotiate that the Jews only had to spend weekend nights inside the concentration camps while spending the weekday nights at the manufacturing site. Once the camp was evacuated due to the advance of the Red Army, Oskar Schindler once more was able to relocate his war-relevant manufacturing, this time to his home region in Brünnlitz, together with his Jewish workers, about 1,200 human beings, while the SS deported about 20,000 Jews to death camps. By the end of the Second World War, Oskar Schindler fled this location and went to Germany. During the course of the war, Oskar Schindler had been the focus of investigations and arrests 
by the Gestapo multiple times. Continued bribes and his connections to the Abwehr led to no further worse actions against him. After the end of the Second World War, Schindler started several businesses, for example, a nutria farm in Argentina, together with his wife, or a cement factory in West Germany. Neither was a financial success. When from him rescued Jews learned about his faith, they invited him to Jerusalem. From the year 1960 up until his death in the year 1974, he spent one half of the year living in a small apartment in Frankfurt am Main and the other half of the year in Jerusalem with his help rescued Jews. He passed away on October 9, 1974, in a hospital in Hildesheim at the age of 66. Thank you so much for watching.